16 Minutes of Care is a podcast based on the care principles, a strategic framework that reveals how brands create impact by caring and, as a result, grow their business. In each episode, Isabel welcomes a company executive who explains how care has helped their business grow successfully and sustainably. 16 Minutes of Care, the fourth episode and the final episode with Tamara Eelsing, Diversity Manager at Stip MIVB, the Brussels Transport Company. Welcome, welcome again, Tamara. We already talked about a lot of things. We talked about care for people, we talked about internal culture, we talked about your role as a diversity manager before STIP and now at STIP. Um, we talked about collaboration, we talked about reliability, so we really talked a lot about, uh, about all of these topics in the uh, first three episodes. But in these last 16 minutes of care, I would like to talk a bit about empathy. I would like to talk a bit about agility and I would like to talk a little bit about the care for the planet because Steep is doing so much on so many levels so you have so many things to say so I will cherry pick and um, for this last episode. We talked about it in the previous episode, um, uh, being a bus driver it, it is a kind of a challenging job, um, there are some safety issues um, and I would like to talk about what Steep is doing, I would like to talk about what we can all change in society because it's a societal problem it's a social problem um, it has a lot to do about respect yeah. do you have any ideas on that it, it is a really really difficult subject because um, as i said in the previous episode it's a systemic again a systemic problem so as i said a lot of the diversity problems that i'm dealing with or challenges that i'm dealing with are systemic problems um, you see that that society has become less less sensitive to to everything that's that's hierarchy authority uh, so the respect for the police the respect for firemen and and people who drive the ambulances for people who work in the hospitals for their doctors uh, but also for bus drivers and, and, and it, it is it is a problem that yeah the respect is less it's it's a new it's a it's a new generation uh, where, where 40 years ago we all respected when the doctor said something, we took it for granted. Now we start discussing and saying what we've read on the internet. And uh, so, of course, one, on the one hand, that's good. Eh? We don't need to swallow whatever, pe whatever people are presenting us. But on the other hand, a little bit of respect for authority and for people who are in charge of things. Eh? Because a bus driver is not only in charge of you, he's in charge of a whole bus. He's responsible for a whole bus. He's responsible or she is responsible for the safety of this whole vehicle. Um, and, and, and yeah, I think that that, that deserves respect. If, and especially in Brussels. I don't know how it is in Antwerp, but if I sometimes see how these buses navigate uh, amongst these little streets with all these cars parked n'importe où. Eh? So they are everywhere. Uh, I have a huge respect huge for our respect. people. Yeah, yes, totally. a huge respect. Is it one of the problems that we face in society that we have evolved towards a very individualistic mindset while if we would think a bit more from the other be more empathetic towards the other and think about indeed it's their job to drive the bus yes. it's their job to get these people to work or to school or to whatever so when for instance when we park in the middle of, of a, a tram track uh, we are blocking like hundreds yeah. of people yeah. but people don't think about that do we no no they, they they think about i need to to go to the grocery store I can't find a parking. Sometimes there's a parking like a hundred meters further, but they, they say, no, I want to be right in front of where I need to be. And it's my need. And that contradicts with the need of the others. So I always think that, that, that freedom is, is a beautiful concept, that my freedom stops where your freedom begins. Or, you know, it's, it's, it's that concept that we can not both have extreme freedom you have to to collaborate and to 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 live together in a nice way you have to consider the feelings of others and sometimes indeed in our society that is something that is lacking and you see that in how 
people in first line jobs are are being treated are being treated yeah. yeah unfortunate we will not be able to solve that i think i know i can only say no. that's why one of the reason i created the care principles we will have to be more empathetic we will have to uh, better understand the other yes. if it's an individual other if it's uh, society as yeah. um, as uh, as a whole but um, it, it is indeed really important and um, i can only say to the people who are watching and who are listening the impact of what we do as individuals on others is really huge and we really yes. have to think about it more. Yeah. Now, um, let's go to uh, the agility part because we didn't have time in the previous nope. episode to talk about it. Agility is all about, um, about adapting yourself to this fast changing uh, society and society today is changing at a fast speed. You are in the midst of Brussels. You are a key player yes. in this mobility um, uh, uh, change uh, 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 of Brussels. You're a really key partner in there. Can you explain a bit more the role that STEEP has in that? Yes. I, I first want to come back to something that I reflected on when I just started at STIB. I never realized how important public transport is in the lives of people. It's not only going from A to B. It's someone being able to go to school someone to be able to go to work, someone to do shopping, someone to profit from cultural events. Eh? We, we transported an enormous amount of people to the Coldplay concerts, for example. How would we do that if we were not there? How? So the impact that we have is far larger. It's, it's, it's enabling people to, to learn, to earn money, to profit, to, 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 to go to sports. So I, I fully understood this impact that we are having on society only when I started working there, because before that it was just a bus or a metro or a tram. I didn't see the lives of the people behind all those uh, different modes of transport. And then, of course, we are in a, in a, in a situation where, especially in Brussels, the, the government is really pushing for a, a, a change of transport. Eh? They want to get less cars into the into the city. They've already done that by uh, diminishing the, the speed to 30 kilometers an hour, which is working. They have uh, more uh, cycle paths. Eh? So they've ad adapted a lot of their infrastructure already. And uh, but th this puts an enormous pressure on STIB to increase our offer. Uh, and so this 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 really uh, has an impact on us on creating a better infrastructure to, to, to make sure that people can still get from A to B and in the fastest way and best possible. way possible, most reliable way possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I guess it's, it's um, and that's why I think it fits well within the agility chapter, it's really about a flexible offer that you can combine, for instance, a bike with a part of the subway and then a part of the bus and then maybe taking another yes. bike again. So it's really about, about bringing all of these systems together, right? Yeah, it's funny that you say that because we have been working on an app which has been tested by customers already. Okay. And especially also we as, as uh, STIB, we don't have company cars. So we, we are users of our public transport. So we know what's going on. Uh, and so often we are used as users as well. Uh, and so we've been testing this, uh, this app which provides us the best way to get from A to B, either the cheapest or the fastest way. Uh, which combines these different modes of transport. So even integrating um, rental cars uh, like uh, the Cambio or uh, the, the, the Trottinette, the step. Steps, uh, electric steps. Very electric popular. steps, the, um, the, the bicycles that you can hire. And, and so that's, it's really an interesting way of seeing this shift take place. We see more bicycles in Brussels now, so that's great. It's a, it's a huge change. For those a huge change. Huge change. For those people who haven't been for a couple of years in Brussels, I mean, it's a huge change. The city, yes. like you said, as a car driver, you can only drive in a big part of the city, 30 kilometers an hour. You feel like a dinosaur in your car, I find, because next to you, there's people on bikes, there's electric steps, and you really feel like an really like a dinosaur, like, oh my God, driving a, a, a car in a city is so not done anymore. Yeah. 
Um, but I like I like the, the the efforts that Brussels is is making, and they have to because every city now knows that they have to go greener, they have to become more sustainable. Yeah. Um, so let's switch for the last couple of minutes to the uh, the the sustainable part because the care for the planet. You said in the first episode. We're really about care for people because transporting people is really at the core of your company. But you said we are also a very technical company and care for the planet is also really something that is really yes. close to our heart. Yeah. Can you give some, um, some insights in what do you do um, on sustainability? Well, first of all, of course, our trams and our metros have always been electric. So there we do not make, need to make a change. We maybe, maybe need can can look at how much more efficient they could be but there's never been a uh, huge, uh, a huge co2 uh, exactly uh, yeah. so uh, but we have about 800 850 buses of which 400 are already hybrid uh, and of which i think about 30 are completely electric and then so from the other 400 there are still diesel buses about 200 are going to be replaced in the next two or three years uh, into either hybrid or electric buses. Then we are also testing one uh, uh, bus on uh, on hydrogen. So there's still a lot of uh, and so we are really um, trying to innovate and to see how this is uh, how this is fitting into our uh, into our concept. But, but, uh, but what what I found sorry that I yeah? I, I uh, interrupt you. But what, what I found very interesting and that we don't. Uh, always think about when you do a test like that it's not just buy or rent a hydrogen bus no it's really also about training the people definitely the technicians, yes. getting new technicians yeah. in it's 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 everything it's um it's it's changing the infrastructure of our company to to create possibilities to fuel uh, or to to create electric hotspots. Where where are you going to put these hotspots to make sure that the buses get enough electricity, for example? Um, the the shift, the people shift that we have to go through is enormous because someone who's work who's you who's a technician who's a, a mechanical engineer is not an electrical engineer. It's two completely different studies, and we do not want to lose the people that we have who are working on buses. So we really need to train to to train the people to get used to everything that has to do with electricity so this is a huge shift, shift internally it's, it's a it's immense yeah it's it has immense. A, it has it has a high impact but making brussels a nice and safe and greener city to live you um invest also in like green spaces. spots and green spaces can you talk a bit more about definitely. that definitely so uh we have some of our uh, depots so yeah we call it a depot so it, it's where the buses it's where no it's everywhere it's like it's tip sites so our sites have a lot of green around it uh, and so uh whereas in the beginning, in the past, we didn't really um, manage this green. We, we just, it, it, it was not really important, but we have been, we've started to manage it to really become full grown green spaces. We are, for example, doing some research on, uh, on one of the sites uh, where we try to look for um, invasive space, uh, uh, spe species. So uh, herbs and and uh, and um, and plants that are not supposed to be there to try to to get them out. Um, we have been thinking about uh, beehives, but of course, combined with uh, vehicles, that might be a bit tricky. On the other hand, if it's far enough away, it could be On great. The roof. Yeah, let let wild uh, flowers grow. Uh, so yes, we are really developing these green spaces now into into spaces that actually have a, an added value. These spaces are not open to the public because that would pose a safety risk. So for the moment, that's not the case. Um, but on the other hand, if you look at all our new um, um, sites, the, the buildings on the sites that have recently been built, they've all been built on a, in a sustainable, long-term, uh, uh, low CO2 way. So uh, we have four sites with uh, solar panel roofs to provide in our own electricity. So we are really making huge steps on, uh, on, on environmental impact. Yeah, great, great to hear. Last question, Tamara. Last question of the last episode. We're really getting to the end of it. Um, you're, uh, I met you as a very passionate, a very uh, driven uh, diversity manager. Uh, what are you, um, what are your next goals? What do you want to achieve uh, still at Steep? Where are you dreaming of to make the world a better place? Oh, my, my dream, my only dream is, is, is 
that people come to work and that they are happy and that they are living together in the same space where not everybody can have what they want, but where we all make an effort to make the lives of the others agreeable and nice. And so that, that we are living in a, together in a better way. So that is my goal for, for STIB, to make sure that people come together and they, they, they live together and they are happy and they learn and they, they enrich themselves through the, the, the contact with the other people. That's, I think it's a yeah. nice way uh, to end. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Samara, for being here. It was really amazing to have a look inside STIP because it's a company, a huge company with a huge positive impact, both on people and on planet. So it was really, really nice to have you. Thank you. For those people who were watching and for those people who are listening, thank you so much for um, listening and watching this episode. Please tell others um, I would like very much to grow my podcast series and so I really need your help. Please share the podcast, please tell others, give us a review, um, just spread the news because the more people that care for people and planet, the more caring we can become as a society. Thank you very much and take care. Want to create lasting impact with your brand while feeding sustainable growth? Check out thecareprinciples.com and see how we can help you. 16 Minutes of Care is an independent production from Isabel Verstraten, brand strategist, founder of The Care Principles and author of the book, Does Your Brand Care? Help us reach more companies who are looking for caring and sustainable growth by giving this podcast all the stars it deserves and by sharing it in your network. Thank you and take care.